Welcome to Measuring Carbon in Trees. This video demonstrates how to measure the carbon found in forests. Across Canada, forest biomass is estimated to store 21 billion tons of carbon. Quantifying our forest's ability to store carbon is key to understanding how to protect and restore them. A common method of quantifying the carbon stock of a forest is to do tree surveys, where a subset of trees in a study area is identified and measured. Tree surveys can also provide information on the biodiversity, health, and resilience of forested ecosystems. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to establish study areas to systematically survey trees in a forested landscape, including how to conduct in-field measurements. Using the field data, we'll also describe how to convert tree survey data into values of forest carbon. Before conducting tree surveys, it's important to think about site selection. Consider, for example, where plots will be set up, how many plots are needed, and what materials are required. Your study area encompasses the entire area that you wish to investigate. Within this large area, specific smaller study sites are identified to capture the variation of the area. Sites can be distinguished by changes in vegetation cover, elevation, ecosystem type, or other geographical features that may vary across the study area. Within each site, one to five plots can be established, depending on the nature of the site. The more natural variation that exists across a site, the more plots that are required. For further details on establishing sites and plots, please see the accompanying guide. Once you have defined the study area and sites and mapped your plots, you can begin to obtain tree data. Here is a list of the required equipment for completing tree surveys. Having everything you need is going to be really important. A detailed equipment list can be found in the accompanying guide. Individual plots can be set up as squares, rectangles, or circles, depending on the landscape, research question, and tools available. Circular plots have a radius of 11.28 meters. Linear plots are square, with dimensions of 20 meters by 20 meters, or rectangular, with dimensions of 10 meters by 40 meters. This means that all plots following these dimensions will have an area of 400 meters square. These plots will only be used for surveying woody plants over 2 meters in height. To start, obtain the GPS coordinates for the longitude, latitude, and elevation of your plot center. Map out the border of your square or rectangular plot to the dimensions mentioned using a measuring tape. The measuring tape can be replaced by markers or flagging tape once the border has been measured. If a compass is available, align the width of the plot along the east-west axis and align the length of the plot along the north-south axis. For circular plots, have someone hold the measuring tape at the center point, measure outwards by 11.28 meters, and walk in a circle around the center point. While walking, Use flagging tape to mark which trees along the border fall inside the plot. Next, with a laser range finder, stand on the south side of the plot and aim north to obtain the slope of the plot. Record this angle in your notebook. Then, stand on the west side of your plot and aim east, measuring the slope of your plot from this direction. Record this angle in your notebook. With these geographical measurements in hand, it's now time to identify and measure the trees within this plot. Each study area supports unique tree communities made up of different species, which you will need to identify. Species identification can be done using a dichotomous key or with mobile applications made for this purpose, such as Google Lens, LeafSnap, and Seek by iNaturalist. It also helps to familiarize yourself with the local plant communities before doing surveys. There are lots of online resources to find this information specific to your area. Within the plot, systematically sample each tree larger than two meters in height. Here, to sample means to identify the species and collect the height and the diameter at breast height, or DBH. To keep track of trees, you can start by doing a lap around your plot, marking each tree over two meters tall with flagging tape. As you finish sampling, 
Remove the tape to ensure you don't resample the same tree twice. Measure the tree's circumference at 1.3 meters above ground height using a DBH tape. A DBH tape is a measuring tape with values converting the circumference of the object being measured to its diameter. If a DBH tape is unavailable, use a flexible tape measure to measure the tree's circumference and divide this value by pi, or 3.14. Record your measurements in your notebook. Next, record the total height of the tree using a laser rangefinder. To do this, first, make sure you stand far enough away from the tree so that you can see both the bottom and top of the tree through the laser rangefinder. Measure the distance in meters and record that in your notebook. Measure the angles while looking at the top and bottom of the tree. The tree height will then be automatically calculated for you by the laser rangefinder in meters. Record the tree height in meters in your notebook. Repeat this for all trees greater than two meters in height within the plot. Now that you have the species identification, diameter at breast height and total height for each tree in the plot, you can calculate the carbon stored in these trees. Converting the field measurements to carbon values is a three-step process. First, you need to calculate the above ground biomass of each tree using the measurements you collected, as well as publicly available carbon coefficients from previous research. These are available in your accompanying guide and data sheets. Here's the basic structure of this calculation. Above ground biomass is found using the values you measured for dBH and the height of a tree, multiplied by a series of coefficients B1, B2, and B3. Tree measurements can also be inputted into the Natural Resources Canada online calculator, which calculates biomass automatically. Next, you need to estimate below ground biomass, which can be calculated using the known root to shoot ratio of different plants. Estimate the below ground biomass by multiplying above ground biomass by the root to shoot ratios for either hardwood or softwood species. For more information, consult the accompanying guide. Finally, to calculate the total carbon per tree, add the above ground biomass calculated for each tree with the below ground biomass calculated for each tree and multiply that result by the generic carbon conversion factor of 0.5. Do these calculations for all the trees in your 400 meter square plot. To scale from individual tree carbon stock, to plot, to site, to study area, start by calculating the average carbon stock within the 400 meter square plot. To do this, add up the total carbon stock calculated for all the trees in the plot in kilograms. Then, divide this value by 400 meter square to obtain the carbon stock in kilograms per square meter area. Complete this calculation for all the plots in the site. Then, for each site, add all the plots' average carbon stocks and divide this value by the number of plots in the site. Remember that all plots are the same size. This is the average carbon stock across the site. Multiply the average carbon stock of the site by the size of the site in meter squared to obtain the total carbon stock of each site. But what we're really interested in is the carbon estimate for the entire study area. So next, add up the total carbon stocks for the sites and divide by the sum of the site sizes. This gives the average carbon stock of the study area. Finally, if you're interested in total carbon stock of the study area, Multiply the average carbon stock of the study area by the size of the study area. Congratulations! You now know how to measure carbon in trees. In this video, you reviewed the steps for selecting a study area, site, and plots, preparing your plot for measuring, identifying tree species in your plot, collecting data for each tree in your plot, using tree data to estimate above ground and below ground biomass, and using tree data to estimate total carbon stocks for an area. For more information, 
please consult the accompanying guidelines for trees and refer back to this video anytime. Happy measuring!